Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are in the great state of Kansas, which we all know mainly from Dorothy. I skipped past a hunting cabin that was mostly for sale for the, uh, the land around it and brought us to this $6,700,000, six bed, seven bath home. It's, uh, you know, it's a little less expensive than some of the more opulent houses we've seen. It's a little smaller, uh, but you know what? If you're being choosy about who wants to live in Kansas, and who wants to live in Kansas that has almost seven million dollars for a house? Uh, I think I think that's about as restrictive as you want to go on yourself. Uh, we could see that we've got uh, that they think. You know, I, I I feel like Kansas is kind of on the boundary of the West. Like the West, you really got to get to Colorado before you're like in the West. Uh, but no, they think that they are because we've got the rearing horse statue here. We've got eons of monoculture grass but at least we've got some you know some grasses and greenery and that sort of thing and then up here we've got uh, what looks like a, a fairly modern uh, stonework big you know lodge style archways and windows let's see what this has in store for us all right here's the view from above and i <laughs> I love this because you can see, you can see how unnatural the grass is in this environment. If anyone was curious, Kansas is not a very wet place. Um, it is in the West in the sense that it is dry as hell. And European colonizers just demolished the topsoil uh, in, in Kansas and everywhere that West of there. Um, they, they advertised it as, uh, being, you know, kind of an Eden come farm here. They, they said it was just like Illinois and then everyone got there and they grazed their cattle there for, you know, a decade or two. And eh, well, then it was, you know, pre dust bowl conditions. Anyway, I, I just love that that is strikingly apparent here and that they've clearly cultivated this little swath of grass here and then everything around it is brown all right here they're showing us the size of this uh parcel of land we can see there is just a whole shit ton of wide open brown spaces and we looks like we got a little pond over here we got a tree line looks like we've got maybe uh, that looks like a horse corral over there um, and we, oh, we've got some docks out into the lake, so you could do a little, you can get out there a little paddle boat. You're not going to do any serious boating out there, but you can, you can go fishing at least. All right, here's the nighttime shot, and we're inside. All right, this looks to be the front door here. Uh, we've got a, a kind of a small little foyer. You know what, I, I like this as opposed to the, the grand foyer kind of spaces. It's, that's, this is all you need. You just need somewhere to, to come in and wipe your shoes uh, and put your keys down, maybe. Uh, we've got some art here. That's, uh, I like that. That's nice. This is tasteful so far. We've got the chandelier in the foyer, of course. Um, the, the candles in these weird columns, that's an odd touch. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I don't know when you would ever light those. They seem like they would be, you'd need like a long, long stem uh, match to light those because uh, otherwise it would be very awkward to get at them. All right, we're in that dining room, which is right off to the side of that opening foyer. Uh, very stern, lots of browns and not a lot of other colors. Uh, actually, no, no other colors to speak of now that I'm looking at it. Uh, and, and the leather, the, the leather with these, these buttons, I don't know what that's called, but I associate that with like law offices. Um, I, I, I grew up in a lot of law offices and, uh, every lawyer in the nineties had this chair, at least one of these chairs in his office. So to see it, uh, around the dining table is a little, like I said, a little stern. Um, these candles are a bit much, but again, when you've got these long tables, you kind of have to stretch out the centerpiece. Um, 
I think it's interesting that they've set the table uh, for a staging, just, just so you can see that everyone fits there, even though these two at the end are obviously very crowded. And we're also, we're an open concept, and so far it seems like a very open concept. This is completely open to the living room here. Uh, I don't see it open to the kitchen, which solves your, you know, everything sounding like a kitchen conundrum. And ideally, no one's in the living room while you are in the dining room. And we've got taxidermy. Of course we do. We've got, oh, holy shit, a lot of taxidermy. I see one, two, three, four, five, five taxidermy birds. I assume those were probably all shot on the property over that lake or something. Um, we've got a guitar, got a music lover, a lot of horse statues. You know what? We, we make fun of young women for being horse girls. Uh, but I'm, I'm assuming that this is a man's office based on the dead birds on the wall. Um, uh, if that's, if that's a, a prejudicial, you know, I'm, I'm making assumptions. I'm making an ass out of you and me sort of thing. Uh, so be it. But I'm going to assume that a man has hung this bird on the wall and that these horse statues belong to a man. And I think, I think we need to call him a horse girl. I think that's only fair. I think this man is a horse girl and deserves to be called it. He's also got, oh, okay, yes, this is definitely a man. There are fish on the side table. There's a fish in this box. There's birds and fish. All right. And horses. That's, that's horse girl. That's, that's adult man horse girl behavior right there. We got a gigantic TV on the wall here so we can keep track of the stonks throughout the day. And I love that they clearly had this fan on when they were taking pictures because it's like faded as if it was caught in motion. Uh, very, very classy there. Oh, oh, here's some red cabinets. I think this is the first color we've seen in this house. Uh, we got, oh, a little red vase to match this brown vase, which matches everything else. Uh, and, and this, Painting of, I assume, the Kansas skyline, because I see a nice flat horizon. Uh, that's, you know, also a pop-up color there. It's a, it's a nice big painting. Um, these little statues over here, I am concerned that those might be those little racist jockey statues. I forget what those are called. That's the vibe I'm getting from those. But let's focus on this kitchen. We've got a kitchen island. The slider thing is nice. It's a nice sink. Um, countertops are beautiful. The woodwork on these cabinets is nice. We've got a pop of color here. These ceilings are absolutely gorgeous. The, the big lofted uh, woodwork with the, the rafters, that's gorgeous. Um, a hellish to heat and cool of course, but who, who's counting? You've got all the money in the world to pay for that. Um, and then it looks like we've got a really long wrapped bit here. This is, so this is something I've seen in a few of these houses where normal, economically normal people with a, with a nice kitchen, you know, not, not like a little apartment galley kitchen, you know, economically normal, but you know, on the upper side of economically normal people, they've got the kitchen counter that you work upon, and then they often have an island, and you'll have like a couple of bar stools on the island sometimes. They have just such a massive space that you've got the counter you work on, you've got the island, and then it didn't make sense to put the chairs around the island because the island is is lost. It's it's lost in the sea of the kitchen. So you have to put the sandbar counter out there. We've got new geographical constructions happening, uh, just for your your bar stools to go on. All right, we've got. Oh God, is this some sort of animal fur print? That's probably real fur. That's awful. What I don't know what animal that is, but I don't like it. Um, and and this stern little the four chairs sitting all huddled together like like this is not a space for relaxing. This is a place for like sharing secrets. And I don't, I don't know. It's it's too stern. 
It's it's too symmetrical. Mm, not not a cozy space. Not a cozy space at all. And here's oh my god, that's so you don't need ten chairs at the at the kitchen counter. That's ridiculous. You have a dining room. I did notice. I did notice if you go back um, that this this seating area, if you'll remember, the dining room is right over here, is open here, is open here. So it the whole space is open to the kitchen. There's just a little bit of a, a turn there. So you've got a dining room a stone's throw away from putting 10 chairs that's just absurd it's it's a kitchen it's not a bar uh, i expect i have been to bars that don't even have this many chairs at the bar all right we what do we got we got knickknacks all up here those have never been dusted ever uh, the cleaning service that they hire says that they dust them, but they're not getting out a fucking ladder for that. They're just like, no, 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 it's dusted, and then they never dust it. Uh, that's the move there, and they're right to do it. They are right to do it. Let's be clear on that. Oh, ooh, we found the refrigerator. It's disguised as a cabinet, because if you're rich, you can't let them know you eat. Eating is for humans, and you must let them think you're a god. So we need to hide the refrigerator. I do like the detail on the, the oven vent up here. That's that's nice. Um, the the kind of rough edge on the stone here, that's kind of cool. But overall, it, it's, it's strange because you've got such a, a warm woodwork up here with the ceiling. But there's really not much in the way. Even even this red just gets lost in this sea of brown and beige and gray. And and once you get to here, this this is like a, a rough stonework. It's it's not even the marble that they've got over here, or else they've just left the edge rough. You've got stonework on the outside here, and then you've got a marble floor. It's it's like being in a cave. I don't want to feel like I'm in a cave when I'm in the kitchen. That's supposed to be a, a warm space. There's another view on that. Oh, we've got a second sink on, on the sandbar, just in case it was too far to walk to this one. Jesus. Uh, we've got some beverage fridges down here that are also disguised uh, as cabinets, but you can at least see through them. We've got a bowl of... Well, they've moved past fake fruit. They now just go with strange, abstract spheres uh, and put those in a bowl. Oh, oh, the dishwasher is also disguised as a cabinet. Everything here is, it's like Transformers, robots in disguise. Jesus. All right, we are in a little sitting room and... We've got a TV over the fireplace. That's right. We got a TV over the fireplace. And you can tell that this fireplace has been used. There's ash in it and everything. Uh, so that TV is half roasted already. Uh, good job, guys. We got oh, we got glass, glass doors between this room. And that looks like that big main living area. So nothing is, nothing is private yet. We've seen no private spaces. Oh, here's our first private space, I'm assuming. I'm assuming there's no windows through here. Uh, but we've got this absolutely enormous, intimidating bed here uh, with the, the four posters, but nothing on top. Uh, those, those are just there to be phallic and aggressive. Um, which, you know what? That seems to be a theme of this house. Masculine and aggressive. Everything here, the brown, the fear of colors, the fish, the birds. I, and, I mean, do you think any women live here? I don't know. I don't know. And if so, what's the quality of their life? Women need color. We need enrichment. I, I shouldn't say that. Men also need color and enrichment. But many, uh, many men, particularly uh, cis heterosexual men, choose to forego their color and enrichment and instead intentionally derange their own minds into sociopathy. Uh, it's a thing. Um, all right, let's let's keep going. The, the ceiling, the ceiling detail is cool. 
Uh, I see a TV here, and I suspect this is a fireplace. Let's see if they're going to show us. Nope, nope, we're just in the bathroom. All right, we got a nice long tub with some sort of statue thing just hanging out on the edge there. That's not, definitely not going to get knocked off on top of you while you're bathing. Um, got a his and her sink miles apart. Miles, we really hate each other. We do not want to be in each other's business while doing our business. And then it looks like that might be through to the shower. Let's let's see if they're going to tell us more. Yes, that is through. That was a door through to this long, strange shower. That's, I mean, a lot of light in here. I, I do like these types of windows, these block windows, but it looks like that's going through to outside. And it's, it's not like you can see details through these blocks, but you could definitely see like figures through them. Um, so I don't know that I need to announce to everyone outside every time I'm in the shower. Um, we get the double double shower heads so you can be rained upon and, and some built-in shelves. Oh no, it looks like we've got more. We've got potentially four shower heads if I'm judging by these handles over here correctly, uh, which means we can really get the whole football team in here. And uh, this is Kansas, so we do love football. We might be getting the whole football team in here. This is such a straight, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, I've been to uh, Turkish bathhouses in Istanbul before, and they have these like narrow stone hallways that come off of the, the main chamber, and, and that's where you, you rinse off. And it reminds me of that in a weird way, except I assume that this, whoever designed this place is not cultured enough to be actually referencing something like that. Uh, they just invented the the shower hallway cave that a catacomb, a catacomb, you might say, the shower catacomb, all on their own. Oh, we've got a billiards table. If your mansion doesn't have a billiards table, are you really rich? Uh, the world may never know. And and even more delightful, immediately behind the billiards table, we can see. Another TV over the fireplace. It's a twofer. It's all in a row. Every rich person uh, uh, indicator right right in a line. Uh, love that. I think that's shuffleboard back there. I see an old school movie projector. That's kind of cool. Uh, so I assume there's a, yep, it says theater. Look at that. They've The house is so big uh, that they've had to, to label the rooms. I love that. And we've got a, a little popcorn. You know what? They've clearly gone into the kitsch of the, the in-home movie theater, which many of these places do. Um, but I, I like that they haven't created like a whole separate space. Like there's no there's no fake concession stand. They've just, you know, they've got a popcorn maker here. They've got a sign. That's fine. That's all you need to do. Um, I think that's shuffleboard over there. Let's see if they'll give us more information. No, nope, we are in a wine cellar now, uh, because of course, if you're wealthy, you need a wine cellar, and this one is very well stocked. Uh, you can see there's there seems to be something on on almost all of the shelves. Yeah, it's a wine cellar. Oh, and here's the theater. Uh, it, it's at least a dark room. We've got the black ceiling. Uh, the walls the walls have some light spots, but that's fine. I think that the, the Black on the ceiling does enough for you. The curtain is a very dramatic touch here. Who's drawing the curtain? Is it automated? Is there like a is there a remote and you push the button and the curtain opens? Or does someone have to like go up and stand at the side and like pull a little pulley cord to open the curtain? I want it. I want to know how that goes. All right, we're outside at the pool. We've got we've got all sorts of activities in this pool. You know what? I like that because a lot of times these pools, you look at them and you're like, are you swimming laps? Is that what you do in there? Like, I, do you just float? Uh, you know, but here you can see, you can see they've got activities. They've got water volleyball. They got a basketball hoop. They got a slide. People are, you know, there's, there's games going on in here. That's fun. All right. And we got a kajillion lounge chairs. Um, I, I wonder how often they've had all of those filled or if that's just for appearance sake, I have a suspicion. All right, we've got, 
We've got some covered seating by the pool. That's always a nice touch if you're going to be having a pool parties. Um, looks like we've got Aloha Beaches. You are in Kansas, sir. Why does it say Aloha Beaches on the... Anyway, it's a little alarming to me that even outside by the pool, everything is brown. It's, I mean, it's... In some ways, it's better than the white and gray pottery barn houses. In some ways, it's worse because it seems toxically masculine to me, you know, where it's it's not just trying to, to have some masculine airs to me. To me, it's 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 female phobic. It's it's a, it's 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 homophobic. It's, if they had any colors in here, that would be gay. You know, like this, this single green pot over here, that's all you get. And anything more than that would just be too girly. All right. That is a nice grill setup out here on this. Uh, this looks like a patio of some sort. Uh, that's pretty nice. All right. I'm not, I'm not much of a griller, but I know that, that the, the grill people go absolutely nuts for the grills. And this looks like a good one. And... And we've got a, a little mini fridge here. That's nice and convenient. You keep your hamburger meat in there so it's not sitting out while it waits to go on the grill. That all seems like a great idea to me. Oh, here's the rest of that deck overlooking the pool. Lots of outdoor space here. I, I hope they're actually using it. I, I feel like in some of these houses, the outdoor spaces might just be for show. Um, but there, there's a lot of really nice outdoor space here. I would like to see a little more greenery on it. Like, like how cute would it be to have like flower boxes on here? Ooh, we got a hot tub over here. I did notice this in the background of some of those pictures. We got another little uh, cookout area here. Um, yeah, that's that's some nice outdoor space there. That is a that is a good use of the space. It's it is very much a sea of concrete, but at least they're not watering the lawn. I'll say that. Um, and we do have a barn. I see some horses back there. Hello, horses. And a corral over here. So, you know, that's, I guess, I guess the horse girl. Well, you know what? If, if you are, if you are an adult man horse girl who has seven, almost seven million dollars for a house, I would expect you to actually acquire your own horses. Otherwise, I would be sad for you because you're, you're clearly suppressing, suppressing your inner horse girl. So, so good for him. Good for him. And here's the inside of the barn. We got some nice stables. Uh, we got some, some <laughs> chandeliers for the horses. You know what? When you love horses this much, you got to make sure they live in luxury. All right. This looks like a little room inside the barn, maybe for a caretaker. Uh, people this rich don't actually take care of their own horses. They hire people to do that for them. Uh, so we got a little living space. We got a dining table and you know what? For, for staff quarters, this is actually pretty nice. I mean that, that for a rug, it's, it's not, not for me, but, uh, but it is obviously a, a nicer, uh, detail here. We got, oh, some intimidating taxidermy deer heads to stare at you while you sleep. Why is that? Why are they staring directly at the bed? That's so creepy. Um, but in terms of the actual quality of like this furniture and the space, this seems like a good place to put your staff up in, even if, even if it's an efficiency. We've got a big hay barn and all your equipment. Oh, I see solar panels. We love to see solar panels. Love the earth. We've got a diagram. We've got, uh, Got a stable with studio apartment, so that was what we saw before. Living quarters with garage, middle barn, machinery barn, lean-to, hay barn. I, I mostly like this because I've I've never lived on a farm before, and so I liked the, I like having this layout of like what all goes into it. Here's the inside of the machinery barn, which I know is is called that now. Uh, this this looks like maybe it's that living quarters that it was pointing toward. Um, this is another efficiency, uh, studio apartment. Oh, that could, that could, there were two 
living quarters. There was a studio apartment and a living quarters, so I'm not sure which this is. Um, but this also looks very nice. Um, obviously small, but you know, you've got your washer dryer, you've got um, a giant pottery barn, <laughs> picture of a spoon, okay. Um, and you've got, you know, space to sit and, and, and a nice kitchen over there. And we've got kind of an unused little patio area. You've got a cook stove there. And this, is that Stonehenge? Is that the Kansas Stonehenge I've heard so much about? Um, okay, we got a fireplace or a fire pit and the world's most uncomfortable slabs of rock to sit on around it. You've got like 10 lounge chairs around the pool and you your your best idea for the fire pit was hunks of rock. Uh, okay, Jan. Oh, well, we've got trail cam footage. Of course, so you could see all of these creatures that you yourself can kill and mount on the walls. That's what it's all about. Um, here we can. Oh, there are actually two ponds. I think I, I missed that in the earlier, but we've got, we've got the pond with the piers and then this looks like more of the fishing pond. Um, interesting. And our last outdoor shot, we've got the pool. It looks like that cover is, is automated, which is nice. Yeah, that is, that's Kansas, I guess. Um, this is... You know what, I, I do think this fits in with, with my perception of Kansas, you know, rich rich people Kansas. You know, it's it's ranching, it's uh, rural, it's yeah, toxically gendered, uh, in this case, in the masculine way. Um, lots of dead things all over the walls. Um, not, not as egregious as it could have been. I've seen worse taxidermy uh, offenses. So this this could definitely be worse. There are some great outdoor spaces. Um, the We didn't see a whole lot of the uh, the indoor like sleeping spaces. I think we just saw one bedroom. Uh, so we can hope that maybe the rest of the family gets some color in their living spaces. Uh, but overall, this seems... It seems like a massively overgrown bachelor pad to me. Um, I I wonder if there's more than one person living here, and and if so, is this also to everyone else's tastes, or is everyone else just living under the shadow of this one aggressively masculine man? Uh, the world may never know. The world may never know, but this is, I assume, CK. Maybe this is the CK Ranch. Uh, so that's that's that. Uh, if you noticed anything that you think I missed, feel free to leave that in the comments. Like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And other than that, have a good one.